Hello everyone, today in this video I'll be discussing the fourth module of uh, chemistry, super important questions and these uh, questions are taken from the previous papers and the model question paper. All are super important ones, don't miss any of these questions and if you solve all these questions you can easily score more than 80% marks and before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more like this. So without wasting more time let's get started. The first question is explain the construction and working of photovoltaic cell. Okay, it's a very important question, mention the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so what is photovoltaic cells? In photovoltaic cells the sunlight gets converted to electrical energy what gets converted sunlight gets converted to electrical energy okay that is called as photovoltaic cell so what happens is sunlight is uh, fallen on the sunlight uh, falls on the front contact here okay and this is an n region and this is a p region and this is a back contact okay so when sunlight falls here what happens a chemical reaction happens from where the uh, positive and negative uh, fields inside that the electron gets transferred and uh, by the electron transfers electricity electricity gets generated and the bulb gets uh, switched on that is called as the, the that is the working of the solar uh, means the photovoltaic cell okay solar radiation is allowed to fall on the front contact of the cell which consists of n type of the region at the top the photons of the solar radiation knock the electrons from the n type region of the material they flow from the n type to p type so that electricity is generated advantages these are eco friendly uh, devices and do not require recharging they generate electrical energy at ambient temperature and do not undergo corrosion and serve for longer duration Disadvantages is that it can only be produced during daytime and installation cost is high. PV cells generate only DC current, okay, not AC current. What are the conducting polymers? Explain the synthesis of the conducting mechanism of polyacetylene and its application. Okay, what is conducting polymer? An organic polymer with delocalized pi electron system. Okay, it is an organic polymer. What is conducting polymer? It is an organic polymer with highly delocalized pi electron system having electrical conductance of a order of a conductor. It is called as conducting polymer. So, a polymer which conducts is called as a conducting polymer. These are found to be highly promising materials for various applications with inherent advantages such as flexibility, ease of fabrication and uh, with low cost okay and the synthesis of polyacetylene is as follows this is nch with a triple bond of ch this is acetylene and with a catalyst it becomes polyacetylene okay and uh, there are two types p doping and n uh, doping in p doping with iodide or bromine with lead uh, leading to hole conduction okay so this is a neutral molecule and when uh, conducted with an uh, iodide what happens is a uh, polaron is formed another uh, and another i2 if we uh, conduct it it becomes bipolaron and uh, finally it becomes solitron okay this is the diagram you need to make next is n doping with alkali metals leading to electron conduction okay with sodium this is a neutral molecule if we add the sodium sodium to it becomes polaron then bipolaron then solitron okay so uh, extra extra bond gets added if you observe here this is the diagram you need to make for end doping applications include light emitting devices water purification hydrogen storage and biosensors okay next is expression generation explain the generation of hydrogen by alkaline water electrolysis mention its advantages okay when we convert uh, hydrogen from the water okay like h2o becomes h and o separating the h and o from the water it is called as electrolysis okay so alkaline electrolyte uh, water electrolysis the diagram is as follows you have to make the anode as the ni base metal and the cathode as also ni base method in between we have koh okay and oh minus is the diagram in between this is the oxygen and this is hydrogen oxygen comes from the anode side and the cathode side emits hydrogen and the water is inserted from here there is, there is a power here so a couple of reactions happen at the cathode the following reaction happens 2 h2o plus 2 electrons is h2 plus 2 oh h2 gets separated at anode what happens is o2 gets separated okay and overall reaction h2o becomes h2 plus half o2 okay and advantages cheaper catalyst with respect to platinum based catalyst and it is higher durability and lower dissolution and higher gas purity okay moving on to the next appointment question explain the preparation and properties and application of kevlar okay what is kevlar it is a synthesized condensation polymerization okay it is synthesized by the condensation of polymerization of para uh, phenyl acid phenylene adamine and terephthalol chloride okay by the uh, condensation of these two we will be getting the kevlar okay so what does kevlar look like it will look like this this is the phenylene adamine and this is terephthalol chloride when we do the polymerization we will be getting kevlar here so what is the advantages of kevlar kevlar advantages are uh, it has high stress and tensile strength good toughness high modulus low electrical conductivity high chemical resistance and low thermal shrinkage and flame resistant okay so it is used for storing and uh, 
pulling things like that like ropes okay and its applications include for the protection we can use for the manufacture gloves sleeves jackets and so on and for the sports we can use for the anterior of the sports as well as in the shoelaces motor vehicles it can be used as inner lining for some vehicle tires to prevent punctures since it has high stress and tensile strength and good toughness we can use it to prevent punctures and in musical instruments it can be used as strength member in fiber optic cables as the one used in audio data transmissions okay next we can have a look at the numerical which can be asked from the module 4 a sample of polymer contains 25 percent molecules with molecular mass of 20,000. so percentage and mass is given this is n1 this is m1 this is n2 this is m2 this is m3 this is m3 okay calculate the number of average and weight average molecular mass of the polymer okay now n1 is given as 25 n2 is 45 so the n3 will be 100 minus 25 plus 45 which is 30 and m1 is 20k 30k and 60k now the calculation of the m1 how m n which is the average how we will do is n1 into m1 plus n2 into m2 plus n2 into m3 divided by n1 plus n2 plus n3 okay so we'll be getting the value as 36500 okay and the calculation of mu that will be n1 into m1 square n2 into m1 m2 square n3 into m3 square n1 m1 plus n2 m2 plus n3 m3 okay so mw will be getting as 43,424.6 units okay that is nothing but the molecular mass the weight the first one we calculate is the number average second is the weight we calculated okay now finally we have to calculate the PDI okay the PDI is um, the average mass of the poly polymer okay so the PDI will be writing it as follows MW by MN okay so we'll be getting 1.818 which is greater than 1 okay so this ratio we will be calculating at the last so this is all from the module 4 of uh, chemistry and uh, please like and subscribe it has been with more just like this don't miss any of these questions and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one